You don't, you don't even know that's on your life. You don't even know it's on your life. I tell my, my wife from fields, I tell her all the time, I say, you know what? There's a, some fields right about three miles from here. I just chop cotton in them fields. Work 10 hours a day, make it 60 cents an hour. So for me to think that God taking me around the world, if someone had told me that a long time ago, I would say, man, y'all crazy? Six months an hour? Chopping cotton? Nobody could have told me then that God would take me to the point where I'd go to Africa, spend $35,000 a trip, plus had a ministry back here to take care of. You couldn't have told me that then because I was looking at what my hand could do. But when that grace is on your life, I said when that grace is on your life, God is able to do exceeding abundantly and above what you can ask or think according to the power. I said that power is on you right now. I said that power is on you right now. Oh, sir, I feel a shot here right now. Come on, somebody shot this thing. Give me off some pains right now. Oh, glory to God. Let the anointing break some things right now. Let the spirit of power be broken up your life right now. Let wealth manifest in your life right now in Jesus' name. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Breakthrough, Bishop. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. Hallelujah. You got to practice covenant. You got to practice seed time and harvest. And then the next one is called tithe and offerings. Tithe and offerings. As I said, before this, God showed me this, I was paying my tithes as a principal to do. It was right to support my church. But then God began to show me that tithing is not just a principle that you practice to take care of the church. It's the covenant connector. I said it's a covenant connector. And so tithing, we're the seed of Abraham. And so we don't operate by the law of tithing, but the faith of tithing, the covenant of tithing. So here, Abraham, over 300 years before the law even existed, understood the, the, the tithing that is not just something you pay it's, it's worship so let me take you here for a moment book of Hebrews chapter number 7 and verse number 1 and let's see how Abraham what Abraham done it said for this Melchizedek king of Salem priest of the most high God who met Abraham returning from the southern kings and blessed him. And then what did he do with that blessing? Verse 2. To whom Abraham gave what? A tenth part of all. Being first by interpretation king of righteousness. And after that also king of sin which is king of peace. What he says that even Abraham before the law. People come back. Well tied into the law. This is, not, this is Abraham now. This is not the law here. It's that Abraham understood that there was a priest there. And if you have a priest that's before you, you, you are to present your tithe to that priest. Hallelujah. And Bible said Abraham gave a tenth to him. And so the priests of the Old Testament all died. But we still have a priest. His name is Jesus. He is our high priest today. He is the apostle high priest of our confession. So we bring our time today. We don't bring it to a priest that dies. 
we bring a priest to one who lives. So notice what the verse 7, I mean verse number uh, 8 says. It says, and here men that what? Die receive tithe, but there he receives them. Of whom is witness that he lives. What he's saying is that when you bring your tithing, you're not just giving it to the church. But you're bringing it and presenting it before your high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So it's not just a principle you're going doing. It is you're, you're operating a covenant practice that Abraham operated in before the law even existed. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. So we're not fussing on whether you should give your tithe if you really love God. If you are seed of Abraham, that, that worship ought to automatically come out of your heart. So, so, what, so what God did in Malachi, God was, was, God was actually correcting some of the people that was really, you know, didn't understand the purpose of the tithe. And some of them said, well, I ain't got to do all that. So look what God says in verse number 8. Malachi 3, no, verse number 6, I'm sorry. Malachi 3, 6. He said, for I am the Lord, what? I change not. Therefore, you son of Jacob are not consumed. Verse 7, he said, even from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. He said, but you return to me and I'll return to you, said the Lord of hosts. But you say, well, where shall we return, God? What shall we return? He said, well, verse 8, will a man rob God? Yet you robbed me. But you said, but where did we rob you, God? I would not rob you, God. He says, in tithe and offerings. What he's saying is, it's not, tithing offering is not an Old Testament thing. It is, an, it, it is a covenant thing. It's a part of the Abrahamic covenant. And if you be Abraham's seed, you're Abraham's, you know, you're, if you're a part of Christ, you're Abraham's seed, and you're operating, the, you're operating tithing under the Abrahamic covenant, not under the law covenant. Amen. And Abraham did not tithe because of a law. Abraham tithed because of his worship to God. In other, words, in other words, God, you blessed me with this hundred dollars. And God, I know that just a year ago, I was on drugs. Just a year ago, I was on cocaine. I was, I was worried, I was frustrated, you know, uh, depressed. But God, look at me this morning. I'm a new destiny Christian center. I'm worshiping God here, God. Look what you've done in my life, Jesus. And God, because you blessed me. I'm not, just, you know, I'm not just doing the duty, God, but it's only my, it's just worship to you, God, to take the first one-tenth of what you have given me, God, of the what you've given me, God, and to not just bring it as a, as, as a legalistic thing, but to bring it to the altar as worship unto you, God. Jesus, receive my offering. Receive my tithe. Because now it's a covenant thing. I'm walking with you now, God. Hallelujah. He said, so therefore, he said, you're cursed with a curse, meaning this. I'm, he said, I'm not cursing you. He said, you're operating in a curse because you're not operating my covenant for principles. You open the door to the devil. But he gives us a solution. Verse number 10. Bring ye all the tithe into my storehouse. Storehouse? What is storehouse for? God don't need no money. I don't need no money. He said, he said it counts out his belong to me. He said, he said, if I was hungry, I, would get, I wouldn't even tell you. So why did God need a storehouse for? Who eats? You do. You're, you're giving in the storehouse. He said, be meat in my house. So that, 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 that Bishop Vince can be able to be away from any, and Bishop, and Pastor Tammy, Pastor Tammy. <laughs> but, but Bishop Vince and Tammy could be able to do it without stress. And they can, they can go ahead and, and finalize this whole, buy this whole property, build a whole other church. And provide more meat in my house without struggle, without stress. So, you know, you know in other words, so when they begin to mention, you say, God, how much do you want me to give? You say, God, how much do you want me to be on that? And then about, you know, you follow me, you, you know, see, and, and what happens is God talks to you. I remember, I remember Apostle Price one time, uh, uh, he was teaching this lesson called race, racism. And, uh, and the Lord spoke to my heart because a lot of his people that, that normally support him quit supporting him during that time because they didn't like him teaching on racism. 
And Allah put in my heart, he said, he said, he said, look, he said, that's your spiritual father. And you need to make sure that his ministry is supported. Uh, do your part. I said, well, God, how much you want me to give? On a month, he said, I want you to give $2,000 a month. I said, $2,000 a month? I need that kind of money myself. <laughs> Are you following me? And, see, and so he said, he said, take them an offering once a month. And anything that's coming less than that, take out your regular, uh, your regular uh, budget and make sure it's $2,000 a month. And so I've done that. Because I knew God talked to you. When you're in covenant, God will talk to you. You don't need anybody to push you. He'll talk to you. And I said, okay, God, all right, honestly, I know your word. And so I started doing that. And we started together, you know, doing that once a month throughout the rest of that series. And then all of a sudden, you know, that summer, a young man came to our church that summer. And, and, and uh, uh, you know, and, and my wife prayed for him. He got him saved and he got filled with the Holy Ghost. He called me about a few weeks ago. He said, Pastor Craig, he says, uh, you don't know who I am, but I came to your church this past summer. And I, I, you know, and I received prayer and I got filled with the Holy Spirit. He said, but I, mean, I went back to where I work at and the people were really giving me a hard time because I don't understand how... Um, I don't really understand, you know, uh, 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 how to talk to him about this. He got filled with the Holy Spirit. He said, "Will you please come and, and, and have a Bible study with us?" I said, well, "Who are you?" He said, "I'm I'm so and so and so and so. I play for the Green Bay Packers. Green Bay Packers." And so and so he, he flew me up to Green Bay. I had about 15 little ball players in there. Uh, Reggie White is it Reggie White? Reggie White. A lot of them was in there, and uh, and, and 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 a lot of them told me they got filled with the Holy Spirit. And so I spent a whole time talking to them about the Bible study. I've been filled with the Holy Spirit. Some of them. Told me they passed them already filled with the Holy Spirit, but I, I ain't told nobody, you know. But I uh, had a good Bible study with all those ball players. Well, that December, uh, God had talked to me about starting a, a, another, a, planting another church in Scotland back in the years ago to plant another church. I'd have the money. It was going to cost about $200,000 to start the church. So then, in December, I get a letter from this young man. You know, he was one of the top players at, 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 at that time. I get a letter from him. And all, and all the letter did was, it was, in a, it was in an envelope with a blank uh, a sheet on there with a check inside. And the check was for $200,000. Now, how'd that happen? How much did God tell me to give? $2,000 a month. How much, so it was a hundredfold return. So when you get, when you're talking about when you're walking with God, God talks to you. But the seed is not about you, it's about what God wants to do in your life. Amen. Your seed is connected to your future. Yeah. Your seed is not looking at your present, looking at your future. So when God starts talking to you about some things, especially when you're in covenant with God, God will talk to you in some areas because he said, that way you can't say your hand and your might did this. Yeah. Nobody never gave me a $200,000 before. I couldn't cut that many hairs of hair. Even with jerry curls. <laughs> But God gives you power to get wealth. And that's what God's bringing this church to. And that's what God's bringing to remember this church to. But God's God going to do it through you. I said, God's going to do it through you. I said, God's going to do it through you. Let, let, me, let, me, let me bring them a present. God is doing it through you right now in Jesus' name. I said, God is doing it. Everybody say, God is doing it through me right now. So verse 10, God said, bring out the tithe to the storehouse to be in my house and prove me. Oh my God, prove me now here with the Lord of hosts if I will not open the windows of heaven. Oh my God, you're talking about the, the right president. Thank God for president. I'm talking about the windows of heaven will be open. And pour you out a blessing that there should not be room enough to receive. Are you ready for an overflowing blessing right now in your life? I speak it over you right now. I said, if you hear the voice of God right now, I pray to pray that God open your ears today. If you hear God's voice and you receive this today, somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And verse 11, he said, verse 11, he said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And he will no longer destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine catch fruit before the time of the fields of the Lord of hosts. And verse 12 says, and all nations shall call you blessed. And you should be a dislike some man. Well, you know, I should read that. I thought it was just all nations. But no, I understand that now. The nations now, not just Coolidge, not just Kessler, not just Arizona, not just America. Nations call me blessed. Because people's lives have been changed in nations. I go to Nigeria now. They pay 
for my trip there now. This one I got on right now, they bought it. They, they had this made special. When I go there, when I, when I get to Nigeria, they have their clothes already ready when I get there. Nations. So that's not just talking about, that's not, that's not just, you know, in, you, know, you know, in the spirit. No, that's actually nations will call you blessed. Nations will call you blessed. I'm speaking of your life right now. Hallelujah. That, that, that where you are right now, don't you limit yourself to this little light of mine, I'll let it shine in my neighborhood. God said nations are going to call you blessed. Everybody said nations. Hallelujah. See these tennis shoes I got on? The, the, these are not Gucci's. These are Gucci's. I got a young man that he came, he, he came to my church years ago. He said, Pastor, when I came, first came to your church, he said, I was so broke. He said, I felt so insecure. I felt so intimidated just being around people like you. He said, but now because I, he said, he said he, he, a lot of people that couldn't understand what you were teaching them. He said, but I got a hold to it. He said, and I told, I told the Lord, he said, I told God, if the rest of them don't understand what's on Dr. Craig, I'm going to take this anointing on his life and I'm going to prosper. Yes. Yes. So just not long, he took me to the store. The Gucci said, whatever tennis shoes you want, just buy them. So I, I don't have to buy Nike. Go Gucci. And then he'll, he'll, he'll take me to Louis Vuitton. Not Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton. <laughs> Not long ago, I needed, I, 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 you know, we were lost, I needed to buy a house. And through that whole time, so he, I look at my account, he'd be able to put $6,000 at a time. $1,000, $6,000. He said, Dr. Craig, he said, because of grace on your life, he says, that's my, my, my business operating by that, by, but you're talking to me on prosperity. He just called me yesterday. He said, Pastor Craig, I, I just made another $30,000. He, he bought himself. He said, I made another $30,000, Pastor. He said, the tithe is on the way. What I'm saying is that he said, because I, when I first came to your church, I was intimidated. I noticed people dressed like they dressed. The way y'all was talking like that. He said, but I, but I said, I want what he got on his life. I'm saying that's what's on you. God going to draw people to you. But remember God told Abraham, I'm going to bless you and you're going to be a blessing. And once people said, you're gonna, the nation will bless themselves because of you. That people are going to be around you and go see that's such a blessing on your life. They're going to they're say, I need to, I need to still see you because I know the blessings on your life. I'm going to bless myself by blessing you. That's what's on you in Jesus' name. I said, that's what's on you in Jesus' name. Receive that. Don't think about where you are right now that you can't be that, that, that's just skipping over you. No. Like I said, I, I tell my church all the time, I started off right on the farm. I just started off in I started off on the farm. Feeding pigs and milking cows every morning before I went to school. Milking cows. I still milk a cow right now today. Sometimes I get the book, bucket about half full, the cow knocked me in the bucket over. So I can testify to you. I know, I don't believe what God can do. I know what God can do. Job said, I know my Redeemer lives. I, see, I want you to get to know God as a covenant-keeping God. And this is the last scripture. Last scripture. And this is when you bring your tithe and offerings, it needs to be a worship atmosphere. It is not a time to, 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 not a time to take up our offering. It's a time to bring our tithe and offering to the Lord as worship. Somebody say amen. amen. And so Deuteronomy chapter 26, I ain't going to read all of it, but just verse 10, you read verse 10, he talks about how to bring the tithe. He says, and now behold, I have brought what the first fruits of the land, is that right? Which thou, O Lord, has given me, and thou shalt what? Sit before the Lord thy God and do what? And worship before the Lord. So your tithing is not just paying your tithes. Your tithing is not just taking up the offering. But it says, I sit before the Lord my God, and I worship before the Lord. Yep. It's a time of worship. So you've got to create that atmosphere. Create that atmosphere. You know, I, I was in a church up there in, in Las Vegas, and uh, uh, I was wondering, because they, it was a very, very state of the art church, and they said what they, you know, and they didn't spend a lot of time taking the offering either. But I said, how are they doing that? But what they did, they had taught the people that tithing is worship. 
and, and, and the people, many people, many of them was given on their phones and given, you know, like we always do, all the different ways of giving and things like that. But when they was giving, they understood the power of worship. So they, so they said, Pastor, you don't need you don't to spend a lot of time talking about tithes and offerings. I'm a worshiper. Amen. And my tithing is a worship to me. So many times, daughter, they pick up their, their envelopes as they're walking in. Amen. And, and by the time, time they, they just, they, by that time they're offering, they just, boom, it's gone. And, and they got a state of art church, state of the art, everything state of art, without putting a lot of pressure on people to tithe. Because they created a time of worship. It's covenant. And I'm declaring on this church right now this church multiplied, this church multiplied this year in Jesus' name. You're, you're multiplying in Jesus' name. You're walking with God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Can I declare something of your life right now? Yes. Hallelujah. I'm declaring of your life right now. The beginning this month, you will leap forward. As you position yourself for divine turnaround, your glory will be increased. And as you commit yourself to these covenant practices, you will change levels supernaturally. People are going to look at you and say, well, what in the world is happening? They're going to say, because, the, because now I'm operating and I'm advancing in my life through covenant practice. Yeah. And I'm declaring over your life right now in the name of Jesus that your eyes have not seen, your ears have not heard the things which God has prepared for you. Father, I've taught the word of God today. And I pray, God, that this anointing, your presence, even your worship today, Lord, will go deep into the hearts of your people, God. Because there are those here today, Father, that taken this word and this change in their life, both those that are here, but also those that are online through Facebook, through YouTube, and how they're watching this today, Father, I declare over their lives right now that this is a new day for them, that their lives will take on a whole new level of anointing, a whole new level of, 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 of power in the name of Jesus. And they will advance in kingdom prosperity as of today in Jesus name amen and amen hallelujah hallelujah well in just one moment we're going to we're going to we're going to give a proper author call but before I do that in this atmosphere I want to receive the tithe and offerings in this atmosphere in this atmosphere and right there on your screen there's, there's, there's push pay, there's cash out, there's Zelle, and there's also the P.O. Box number. But I want to do something with you as you, as you prepare your, your tithe and offerings today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I, I, I want you to visualize you bringing your tithe and offerings to Jesus. And, and, and that although we're receiving the tithe here, he's receiving it there. Are you following me? And, uh, and so, uh, you know, if you got your phone, how do you need to do it today? But, but I want you to, as of today, say, devil, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop listening to you concerning <laughs> my, my, my future. I'm hooking up with God. I'm going to walk with God at a whole other level. Hallelujah. Again, push pay. Uh, uh, then cash out there. right on, uh, And then also through Zelle. Amen. Facebook, you may be the same. You may be you on Facebook. God may talk to you. You've been listening to Bishop. He teaches on Tuesday for Bible study. He teaches on Sunday morning. This man of God, I've I, I seen him. How, 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 what God done is, has done and is doing his life and going to do in his life. And so you may want to sow a special seed, a summer seed. Amen. That will be on your business and your, in your, in your life in, 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 this, in, in, in this covenant. Because you're in covenant with him. You're not just a member of the church. You're in covenant with the bishop. This is a covenant connection. And you may want to do that, God, to God, what would you have me to do extra today? As a special seed that I need to sow in an apostle, uh, apostle, I kind of call bishop, in Bishop Vincent Tammy with this church, New Destiny Christian Center. Let me tell you something, saints. This church ain't normal. You, you, you don't come to a whole school and take over. This ain't, this ain't normal. You know, you know. You know, like I said, you know, people trying to get like a little bit of small church. They, he can he, he the whole school. This church is not normal. Your bishop is not normal. 
Tammy's not normal. Y'all are not normal. You're not normal, amen. And so, so, so it at normal seed. That this church will be the most prosperous church in Arizona in Jesus' name. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. I'm just, I'm just kind of waiting on that. Thank God for them that's soaring back there. You that are on Facebook, go ahead and do that. Listen to obey. Everybody say obey God. Because God will talk to you with some strange thing. Come out. You'll be strange. God said, you, you, you're talking to me about that? God said, yeah. Talking to you about that. Because I got someone who well, I'm going to take you to. I got someone I'm taking you to. Y'all ready to go with God taking you to? Yes, sir. Amen. That your hands can't do, but God can do through you. Amen. And what I could do, now you that have already given, I want you to just come to the altar. You, you know, I'm going to have you bow your knees and like that. I want you to just come to the altar, but I, I want you to really see, even you know, if you've already given, I just want you to just come and, and let's just pray. I, I, I'm going to lead you in a, in a prayer before Jesus. Amen. And uh, so I know some of you give it on your phone, some of you, however you're giving, but you still bring it, bring your phone with you. Let, the, let your phone be your offering bucket. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whatever you need to do, but we want to present it to the Lord. Just come up to the altar and we're going to present it to the Lord as worship unto him. As worship unto him. It, it is not about paying bills. It's about worshiping the Lord. It's about keeping covenant with Almighty God. Manzoriki hela. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's about presenting our tithe and our offerings to Him. It's about worshiping Him. We center on Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. That's right. That's right. Thank Him. Has God been faithful to you? Look where you are on a Sunday morning. You're at, you're at New Destiny Christian Center on a Sunday morning. Some people, you know, just, are just getting off the, out of the nightclubs. But you're here worshiping God on a Sunday morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If, if you've already given, maybe through Facebook or maybe through your, your phone, have you done that? But in, but in the spirit realm, I want you to visualize Jesus at the altar of Almighty God in heaven. And you lift up your offering to him as worship. Just, just lift your hand before God right now. And say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for all the things that you've given unto me and to my family. I was a sinner serving Satan. He was my God. But I called on the name of Jesus. You heard my cry. You delivered me from the power of darkness and you translated me into the kingdom of your dear son. You blessed me. You prospered me. And now, Lord Jesus, I bring you my tithe. I bring you my offerings as worship unto you to honor you as the one who gave me the power to get wealth beyond what my own hands could do. Jesus, receive my offerings. Receive my tithes. And now, Lord, because I've been obedient to your word, I ask you to bless me. I ask your blessings. Shower my family. Shower my business. Shower our church. According to your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, you, everybody, so, a breakthrough just happened. Now we need to give God a great big shout. Give a great big shout of praise. Come on, give God a great big shout of praise. Hallelujah.